Hi, I'm Sharif, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, my name is Jamil. Everyone knows me as Jamie, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. This is my go-to brunch dish. I'm kind of known for my shrimp and grits, so I don't want to brag, but I'm just telling you what the people are saying. I'm going to make Thai jumbo shrimp with grits. It's really, really fast. You can really get this done in 20 minutes. Today, what we're going to make is shrimp with a vegetable ragu and polenta grits. Now we are going to get started on my grits. I'm going to grate the cheese first. The first thing I've got to do is heat up some chicken broth. In a medium saucepan, we're going to put our veg stock. And while we wait for that to come up to temperature, I'm going to start cutting some of these larger green stalks off the leeks. I'll start prepping the rosemary and thyme. Now the parm. I like to do two different cheeses. I only need a cup of cheese, and if I don't have enough, I will add some more. There we go. First, I'm gonna add just a little butter. I know people do this in a weird order, but you actually should put your salt into the liquid already. So let it dissolve, mix in. Once you add the grits to the pan, you gotta stir and keep your eye on them. We're gonna add a little bit of the herbs that we chopped up. The leek is actually flimsy. So I'm gonna pull it out so I don't want it to break all the way down. I grew up on grits. I've been eating grits since I was a kid. Here in New York, I'm like, do you guys have grits? You serve grits? No, no, no. What's grits? Now I can add in my tabs of butter. I'm gonna put three in now. I'm gonna add my secret ingredient. <laughs> this is coconut milk. If you see that your polenta is cooking, and drying out, add water. And I'll add half a cup at a time as I cook down. So I'm gonna add a little olive oil and I just wanna keep a little fat content in there. All right, so we are just about done with our grits and this is the perfect consistency. So now we can go ahead and add in our cheese. Fold it in, it'll start melting. Now we talking. Into the pan we go. You wanna scrape out everything from your pot. And there you are. Stick it in the fridge and we'll let it chill there for about four hours. And now I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese. Get it nice and creamy and cheesy. Here's our chill polenta. We're gonna just turn this out. There you go. You just push those straight down. Give it a little turn, pull it up. Here you have your polenta cake. The butter is melted. I can smell the lovely coconut milk in there. I could cover it if I wanted to. Uh, I probably will. We're gonna crack and whisk two eggs together for about four to six polenta rounds. Just add a pinch of salt to that. Fully whisk your egg till it's like pale yellow. Sit it down and I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour on top of that. That should just give it a little crisp coating. I'm just gonna add maybe another little piece of butter and a little pepper. We're gonna put a little oil in that pan and sear them on each side. We're gonna give it a minute per side at a medium high heat. Here's our sexy polenta. Okay, now that my grits are finished, I'm gonna move on to preparing my ingredients for the shrimp. So now I'm gonna prep the ingredients and we're gonna cook our veg ragu. First, we're gonna prep our herbs. So we have parsley, here's our thyme, and we're gonna add the rosemary to that. Next, I'm gonna do a Garlic corn. I take about four cloves, large cloves of garlic. I'm just either gonna chop or just maybe dice a little bit. We're gonna cut through the onion lengthwise and then just cut down. I always tear up when I'm chopping onions. It's so annoying. Okay, now we got our jalapeno here. So this is to add some kick to your shrimp. Now for our celery. Here is my green pepper and then you just use your fingers and kind of just scoop out the middle part and you break it out. Now for the garlic. So I chose the andouille sausage because it's my favorite and it's what I'm familiar with most. And again, don't get discouraged by the amount of ingredients that you have to use. Get some olive oil in there. Here we go. Our herbs. This is going to be the next step. Yes, corn. Hopefully whenever you do this, you drain this corn. And I'm gonna cut these slices thin. So we're gonna do nice little thin slices and let that just work in there. I can see that the corn is kind of, uh, let's say, 
shriveling slightly, which means the water coming out from the corn is being released. So this we're just gonna cut up into cubes. So I just cut it in half first, then cut them in strips, and then we're just gonna dice that up. And the squash will release a little bit of water, but it's not gonna be too much. A little bit of salt. And then this again is usually a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. I'd say you stir this for maybe 10 minutes, eight minutes. I like the flavor of oyster mushroom. It's a milder flavored mushroom. And I also like that it kind of looks like when you chop it up, it kind of looks like clams almost. Plus it's oyster, it's all in the like, theme of like fish. If you can see now, the furthest my uh, garlic has gone is a light little golden color. We also are going to add to this pasta vetrano olives. They're perfumey almost, they taste amazing. I think I'm going to go ahead and add my sausage now. In the meantime, hello parsley, and then I'll do a little roll. Typically I'll end up maybe with a tablespoon, two tablespoons. It's all sweating down nice and slow. Now what we're gonna do, we're going to add an aged bourbon barrel fish sauce by Red Boat that's gonna be like the element that takes this ragu to the next level. And at this point I'm gonna do the chili flake just so I can see what I'm putting in because once the tomato goes in I won't see it. And then we're gonna go in with crushed tomato. And I just wanna put enough just to kind of make it wet and a little saucy, I don't want it drowning trying to keep it hearty looking, but really flavorful. So this is nice. It's exactly where I want it to be. I will now add, always have to add a little bit more salt, and I'm gonna add my parsley. You can see it's starting to brown now. Look at that. That looks yummy. Okay guys, turn you off. We've got delicious garlic corn. Ready to go. And this is my veg ragu. Okay, so now that this is done cooking, we're gonna set it aside and get started on our shrimp. Next, we're gonna make the shrimp. But first, we have to make the marinade for the shrimp. I'm gonna pour my veggie oil and my sesame oil into the bowl. I, I want my chilies in there already. It's just as, as simple as chopping it. Seeds and all, guys. Okay, so now I'm about to season my shrimp and get it all ready to add to the pan. So I'm just gonna mix in my seasonings here. I have my smoked paprika, my onion powder, dried thyme, garlic powder, black pepper, last but not least, the Creole seasoning. Now we're gonna cook our shrimp. These shrimp right here are U10 to U12. That's the size of the shrimp. Just to get an idea of what that means, it's about the size of the palm of my hand. We're gonna season those with a little bit of lemon pepper and a little bit of salt. We have soy sauce, brown sugar. The sriracha is gonna add a little bite to it too. Yummy, yummy. Ketchup, it actually balances out the heat and it also makes for a nice basting. So now I'm going to season my shrimp and now I'm just gonna rub the seasoning in so we can get it on both sides. I am gonna move on to my garlic. I am gonna use all this garlic. Now we're just gonna rough chop. No need for anything special. The last thing I'm gonna do, take two limes. These are really nice size limes. I'm doing the poor man's juicer, or maybe a wise man's juicer. <laughs> I'm just holding the lime as I'm squeezing the juices out of it. This is jumbo shrimp. So let's just salt and pepper both sides, pretty easy, and pepper. All right, now that we have all this, we're gonna say swimming time, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. What we wanna do is let this shrimp marinate about seven minutes. The acid from my lime is gonna cook it. Okay, so now that I have my shrimp all seasoned, I'm gonna add them to the pan. I'm gonna put a little oil on my grill pan, and I'm just gonna brush that so it's distributed evenly. I'm keeping them apart so they're socially distanced. So now I have my shrimp in and I'm just gonna stir them in. If you look with the camera, you can see that the corn just start curling. That means it's actually kind of cooking in the acid already. It's time to go, folks. So let's just add a little bit of veggie oil. Let's paint some of this on. I'm gonna go out to you first. That sizzle is just so inviting. So one side is cooked. We're gonna turn those over, keep them apart. This is looking good. We don't like our shrimp to be overcooked. 
So now I'm going to add a little water to make a little juice, a little gravy from all of this fabulous seasoning. I'm gonna check my first guy and hello, Flamingo Pink. I can smell it. Oh, that smoke is going right into my eyes and you can really feel the heat of that chili. So you know it's done because it's pinkish orange on each side, the tail is the same color. There's no black. You see it's half the size it was before. It's shrunken and curled up. Smells delicious. And we are pretty much done. And guess what? I'm not gonna overcook it. That is it, you guys. Time! There you have it. These are my shrimp. All right, now we are done cooking and we're gonna put it all together and get it on a plate. It's time to plate our dish. But first I'm gonna do a little garnish with the leek stalks that we had, the green part of the leeks that we had left over. We'll put the leeks in this pan saute them off just a little bit. Before I start plating, I need to just do one last prep with my grits. That's where I like to add my very last tab of butter. Look at that melt instantly into these beautiful, beautiful coconut infused grits. I'm not gonna use all of this because it's definitely, I only use about a cup of cheese. Just fold it into your grits. So when I'm preparing my shrimp and grits, I like to put all of the shrimp and the ingredients on top of the grits. You can't touch my grits. You can't touch my grits. Let's take these green leaves of the leek out of here. Let some of that oil drip off of it. First, we're gonna put one of these sexy polenta cakes at the bottom. To treat grits like it's mashed potatoes. So I like to make a little pill. As if I was gonna do gravy, I actually put a little corn as if it's gravy in there first. Okay, let's just do that. I'm gonna actually move all of my ragu to one side of the pan and I'm gonna pull just enough the size of the spoon towards the edge of my pan. And we're just gonna plate that right along the top. Kind of like what we call in the food world a canal. Now for our shrimp. One, two, three. I'm actually gonna hook you. Marry the two tails, just like that. And you're gonna place them right on top. Then we're gonna take a few of the leeks that we fried. Just kind of let them just land where they land. Kind of looks like something from the ocean, right? I like to rain on top of my plate here. And we're gonna top that off just with a few pieces of our Parmesan. There we go. Here is my shrimp and grits. Hi, grilled jumbo shrimp served with grits and corn. This is my shrimp and polenta grits. Okay, now we have our shrimp and grits plated, and now here is the moment of truth. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. I feel like I was just teleported to South Carolina. Mmm. Okay. I think I will definitely use half of the jalapeno next time instead of the whole thing, because this is, it's good, but it's kicking. It's spicy. It all works together. It's nice, every one of these flavors are patting itself on the back and just working together nicely. I love it. Underneath the shrimp, you have all this umami and amazing flavor with the Castle Channel olives and that fish sauce kind of just jumps out right when it needs to. But that cheese does it all. Like everything comes together with the corn and the cheese and then the little bit of the leeks as the decor. That really, it actually gives it a great flavor. Shrimp and grits is a quintessential southern dish, but it's also adaptable to various flavor combinations. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Grits are made from the endosperm, the starchy white part of mature white corn. Sharif used traditional southern grits that he boiled in water with a small amount of olive oil and butter. Lorenzo used instant grits, which are commercially made to shorten the cooking time and avoid any clumping. Instant grits, I have no idea. Rose, Rose. They're pre-gelatinized, so partially cooked, and then drum dried so that they have tiny pores that are very quickly rehydrated in hot water. He cooked his instant grits in chicken broth for a savory quality. Jamil made polenta cakes. Polenta and grits are both made from corn. However, polenta is typically more coarsely ground and golden from yellow corn that's full of carotenoids, which give it the beautiful golden color. And grits are more finely ground and white. Sharif used extra large shrimp. 
Shrimp are usually sold according to the number of shrimp per pound. So the larger the shrimp, the lower the number, as in 21 to 30 shrimp per pound versus 10 to 15 per pound. The shrimp was already peeled and deveined. The dark line that runs along the outside of the shrimp lengthwise is the digestive tract of the shrimp. You can leave it in, but it's not very appetizing. He sauteed his shrimp in a pan for about four minutes. It doesn't take long since shrimp cook very quickly. Lorenzo used jumbo shrimp, which are larger than Sharif's. His shrimp was also peeled and deveined. In addition to not being very sightly, sometimes this digestive tract can add a mushy or gritty texture to the shrimp that's best to avoid. He grilled his shrimp on high heat. This adds some dark roasted color from Maillard browning and crisps his shrimp as the sugars in his marinade caramelize and the surface dehydrates during grilling. Shrimp prepared this way are delicious, but slightly less tender than shrimp that are steamed or boiled. Jamil also grilled her shrimp and added them last to her elevated level three vegetable ragu. Jamil was careful to thinly slice her garlic lengthwise or pole to pole. I learned this from my adopted Italian grandmother. I do not cut my garlic the short way. I cut it the long way actually so that it releases the sweetness of the garlic and not the bitterness. When you just crush and smash garlic, it releases the bitterness in the garlic. The way you cut your aromatics like garlic and onions can impact flavor. Inside of the cells of garlic is a thiosulfate molecule called allium. It's unremarkable while intact. However, once the garlic is crushed, sliced, or chopped, an enzyme held between the cells called allianase reacts instantaneously with the allium to form allicin, which breaks down further into various garlic flavor compounds. The more chopping, the more exposed reactants, hence more reactions to produce the flavor molecules and increase garlic flavor. By slicing the garlic from pole to pole or lengthwise, some studies have shown that fewer cells are damaged, limiting the reaction that forms the flavoring molecules. However, in this case, because there's so many strong flavors, it's not likely that you'll notice the subtlety of the garlic much. Garlic is also high in fructose, a simple sugar that caramelizes wonderfully, no matter how you slice it. Shrimp and grits are so versatile. You can make the grits your sauce or fry them as a cake and add a thick and hearty ragu. In any case, we hope you'll try some of these tips from our three amazing chefs.